<laughs> hey, it's me, Frank. Uh, I'm back again to the market with the girls' uh, band sale, sushi, and pork fish. Okay. Their shop is closing due to the coronavirus. Uh, every, all those, a lot of the restaurants and bars are closing, so they're all heading back home. So this is a, a goodbye party for everyone. So. No party goodbye. Yeah, party goodbye. <laughs> a party goodbye. <laughs> I like that party goodbye. Hey everybody, it's me Frank. Um, just coming to you from Vietnam. So I made this video about a week ago, but I did such a poor job of of filming it, and I got really bad audio that I didn't know what to do with it. Uh, some of the main reasons for that is because, like, like I said in the intro, this was a, a goodbye party, so I was just more interested in, in talking to my friends and just seeing what their plans were and uh, enjoying all the food as opposed to just um, trying to get everything on film and uh, making sure my audio is right. So anyways, today uh, the girls, they took me, we went out for food. Uh, we got some snails. Well, yeah, we got went to a snail place. We got several plates. We got about six plates of food. It included uh, snails like of um, two different kinds, kinds of sizes. Some really small and then some larger ones. We got a plate of large oysters, uh, some blood co cockles, and some mussels. So for four people and about six plates of food, it was only 300,000 Vietnam dong, which is about $12.91 right now. All right. Let's see, so basically, basically like I said, um, uh, the, girls, the girls and I, we went out uh, as a goodbye party, or as Ban Sale would call it, a party goodbye. Um, so if you haven't guessed, those are not the girls' real names. Um, uh, Ban Xiao or Pancake, Sushi, Raw Fish, and uh, Hot Vit Lun, which is a duck egg fetus. That's not the real names, but that's just their favorite foods that they, uh, that sort of describes an aspect of, the, of themselves in some way. So I've, uh, I've talked about in previous videos how certain businesses have uh, been struggling. So since February, there's been a lot of like uh, tourist focused businesses in Saigon that have uh, been th uh, gone through some hard times. And recently, uh, an order to shut down all bars and uh, most restaurants uh, might be the final nail in that coffin. Um, the bar that these girls worked at was closing down uh, until t until at least, like I said, at least the end of March, um, probably longer. Um, so with that, the girls decided to uh, pack up, head back home, help out their families with their business, and um, you know, just keep going that way. So let's see. So. Um, and, and they're still pretty hopeful about the whole situation too, which uh, which is reassuring. Um, Ban Seo, for example, she'll be helping her family sell rice. Hot Fit Lone, uh, she's going to actually help her family grow some rice. And uh, Sushi's family, the way I understood it, run a store. I They showed me a picture of the <laughs> items they sold, but I couldn't really recognize any of them. Um, but. It sounds like uh, her family business does well, so she'll be in a better spot than the other girls, I guess. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure these girls are not the only ones impacted um, by the virus. Uh, I feel like many people, you know, you watching this, you may be impacted, or I'm sure you at least know someone who is. Oh yeah, so we also got some, um, well actually we got some dessert first. We got this Vietnamese dessert, uh, which is, it's sort of interesting, it's like, it's mostly coconut milk based, with uh, uh, chipped ice in there, and then there's sort of more like savory types of uh, additions you can put in there, for example chestnuts, I'm not a big fan of the way they 
do the chestnuts there. I like roasted chestnuts. I don't like them when they're crispy like a water chestnut. Um, beans too, and it's not like uh, not like ranch or, or baked beans. It's just uh, just the beans themselves. So just, just think of a just the bean texture, no bean flavor though. So or at least not like a like a ranch where it's flavored. Yeah, so what are some positives we can get out of this situation? Um, well, you know, one thing might be telecommuting. All right? It seems like a lot of businesses are starting to do that, and I've always been wondering why they don't do it more. Um, I, it just seems like it would make sense. I mean, you're spending less space on office space. Uh, your employees potentially can get more stuff done from home. If, I mean, if they do it well, right, if they know how to work from home and not be distracted at home. Uh, but I see that as a positive thing. Um, you know, if people are concerned about carbon dioxide emission, well, that reduces the amount of uh, amount of carbon dioxide you use on fuel and, and stuff for transportation. You know, because even even electric cars use carbon dioxide. You got to get that electricity from somewhere. Um, hopefully, in the future, I know it's easy to say. It's easy to say. It's hard to do. But hopefully, people will actually have like a, a six month. Um, emergency savings, uh, you know, just for a little financial um, cushioning there in case weird things like this do, do happen. I mean, li life events happen to everybody everywhere, but now unfortunately it's being impacted on a, on a larger scale. So I am curious about, you know, at what point do we hit where, you know, at what point is it where the economic impact is much much worse than the than the health threat? You know, at what point do people sort of get fed up of not not working, not being able to do anything? Where they're like, no, no, look, we're we're done staying at home, we're done not making money, we got to get back to work. Um, I don't know. It's sort of curious. I think I think every country will be a little bit different in the way they handle it. Uh, I'm thinking some countries maybe may be pretty stubborn and just not let anything go until until this is completely done with so and I'm not sure what it will what will exactly be the right choice I mean well it'll be something we'll have to look at later <laughs> later in time like a, a year or two out um, we'll be able to like look back and then maybe really tell okay what worked well and what didn't so we'll need like a like an after action report, if you will. You know, because uh, like I've said, this is, uh, I've said in previous videos, because I've done coronavirus videos, um, maybe I should edit out the word coronavirus because YouTube freaks out any time I say it in a video, um, that this is not like a very severe illness, all right? Um, the main issue comes from uh, the fact that it's severe enough that it can overload healthcare systems fairly easily. When you get that, your, your hospital overloaded, then your doctors and your nurses, they get sick, you know, and then you maybe have some, uh, some critical, some very critical minimum wage jobs in that hospital where that worker might just say, you know what, I'm not going into that place. That place is filled with that disease. Uh, you know, I got my mom at home or something like that. I don't want to get her sick. All right, I'm thinking like people like uh, janitorial staff, maintenance, um, people like that. You know, some of them will stick it through, but if it's if if they're struggling with uh, health insurance themselves, they might just say, you know, what, it's not worth it. It's not worth it for minimum wage. And then you, then I guess the doctors have to clean the rooms, right? Right? That, that'll happen, right? Anyways, so after this. Uh, we also got got some we got some faulo. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Like I say, most things in Vietnamese wrong. <laughs> got some faulo, and uh, it was served with bread, uh, banh mi, and uh, we also got like a, it was just called dry beef, uh, kho bò. So it, that was really tasty. The dry beef that was wonderful. Yeah.
Anyways, we are definitely in weird times. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe. It's sounding like uh, I've heard, right? These are these are things I'm hearing that uh, the supply chain in the U.S. at least for grocery stores, uh, they're not at a com they're not completely empty anymore. You know, we're getting the goods in there. It's just we 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 work at an efficient or they those stores work at an efficiency where you know they don't want to overstock their uh, their items so their distribution um, is sort of based on what they need or predict they need each week I mean we've got the goods so I mean I feel people should just sort of calm down you know collect uh, collect what you need what you think you need um, and, and go from there people have asked why why do Americans why are we buying so much toilet paper? Um, I've heard one one possible explanation to add on to like panic and stuff like that was that um, you know a lot of Americans thought they could just return it no problem. Uh, I, know, I know Costco recently is saying no, you can't you can't buy all these critical or um, high demand items like toilet paper or or other items and then just return them. You know after everything's done, we're not taking returns on them. So that's curbing people from overbuying at least you know buy what you need um, uh, I'm not gonna s I don't know how long you need stuff for but <laughs> I'm just rambling there I'm sorry guys anyway stay safe all right uh, take care of yourselves take care of each other um, hopefully we'll see this through uh, very soon all right bye bye <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Sorry.